So guess what? God is not afraid to put us through a test. God is not afraid to try us. God is not afraid to turn up the heat to see what we're made of. I know y'all are going to shout me down on that one, okay? But listen, God wants to know, are you going to really do something with the double portion? Are you going to do something with this key? Silver's also likened to wisdom, discernment, revelation, understanding. I want to read to you from Proverbs chapter 2. It says, my child, will you treasure my wisdom? Then and only then will you acquire it. And only if you accept my advice and hide it within you will you succeed. So train your heart to listen. That's that focus I was talking about. Train your heart to listen when I speak and open your spirit wide to expand your discernment. Then pass it on to your sons and daughters. Yes, cry out for comprehension and intercede for insight. For if you keep seeking it, like a man would seek for sterling silver, searching in hidden places for cherished treasure, then you will discover the fear of the Lord and find the true knowledge of God. Wisdom is a gift from a generous God, and every word he speaks is full of revelation and becomes a fountain of understanding within you. For the Lord has a hidden storehouse of wisdom made accessible to his godly ones. He becomes your personal bodyguard <laughs> as you follow his ways, protecting and guarding you as you choose what is right. Then you will discover all that is just, proper, and fair, and will be empowered to make right decisions. Come on, hold your key up. I want that. <laughs> I want that wisdom. Empowered to make right decisions as you walk into your destiny. When wisdom wins your heart and revelation breaks in, true pleasure enters your soul. Isn't that amazing? You need to go home and just chew on that scripture. That's an amazing scripture. And kind of along that lines, I felt like as I prayed into this year, I felt like the Lord said that he's going to release solutions for resolutions. You know, at the beginning of the year, you make New Year's resolutions. That's like, I'm going to change something about myself to, as I go into this new year. But a resolution also means to find an answer, to, to finish something, to get something resolved. Listen, this is what it actually means. The act of finding an answer or solution to a conflict or a problem. How many have some conflicts or some problems or some quandaries or something that's unresolved that you want to see get resolved? Come on, maybe you've got a physical issue you need to get resolved. Maybe you've got a relational issue you need to get resolved. Maybe you've got a business issue or something else you've got to get resolved. Come on, God's going to release solutions for resolutions. It's to settle or solve something, to deal with something successfully, to make a serious decision to do something, to formally declare or decide something by a vote, the ability of a device to show an image clearly and with a lot of detail. That's a whole different take on resolution. But how many believe that God wants to give us divine insights, prophetic strategies, solutions that are going to end long-standing issues, long-standing situations, and God's going to shift it? How many believe God can shift it right here at the beginning of 22? Amen? Finally, the last key, the ancient key, the bronze or black or ancient-looking key, is like a key to the treasure chest of wealth and weapons. And in Isaiah 45, verse 3, God's promise at the end of Babylonian captivity was this. I will give you the treasures of darkness. How many have a key to the treasure chest? I'll give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, the God of Israel, am the one that calls you by your name. God's not afraid to bless you. But you know this phrase, treasures of darkness, in the Hebrew, actually means this. The armory of weapons. Doesn't mean money. It means the armory of weapons. Spiritual weapons, not flesh and blood weapons. Come on. We don't fight like people in the world. We fight with spiritual weapons. treasury of weapons. God's going to show us new ways to engage in spiritual battle to bring breakthrough, breakthrough in 2022. But then it also says the hidden riches, which is the wealth, the finances, the resources, the opportunity. How many believe that God has some new of that for you during this season of time? Amen? It's not just that, but it's, it's, it's everything that I'm talking about that God's going to bring us into this new season. We need to use our keys. We need to realize that our words are a key. 
we need to realize that the way we walk in this life is a key. And finally, and I could just go on and on with that, but I'm going to end here and say our worship is a key. And one of the key verses for this year is 2 Chronicles 20, 22. Get it? 20, 22. <laughs> Jehoshaphat and his armies were surrounded by all these enemy nations. And a prophet rises up and says, seek the Lord. You're not going to have to fight in this battle. God is going to fight for you. I want you to lift your key up and say, God's going to fight for me. He says, you don't have to fight in this battle, but you have to show up for the battle. So go down to the battlefield in the morning. And when you get there, I'll tell you what to do. And, of course, Jehoshaphat had the strategy to send the praisers out in front of the army making this declaration. Praise the Lord. For his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And when they started letting that come out of their mouth instead of, oh, my God, we're going to be destroyed. You know why God says to put praise continually in our mouth? Because otherwise we say something different. (laughs) They were surrounded by the mightiest armies of the day. Instead, they said, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And it says in verse 22, now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Could you stand to your feet with me? And I want you to just hold your key up, and we're going to make one last decree to receive our keys. Just hold your key up and just decree with me. Say it with me. Today, I receive the keys of the kingdom from the hand of the Lord so I can unlock the more this year. I will use them to function in my role as a member of the ecclesia to bring God's kingdom purposes to pass in the earth. I receive authority and governmental anointing to rule and reign in my sphere of influence. I receive the gold key of favor and expect to see many new doors of opportunity open to me. I receive the silver key of purity, wisdom, and revelation. I will hear your voice in new ways this year and will find solutions for resolutions to many long-standing issues for myself, for others, and for my land. I receive the ancient key that unlocks new spiritual weapons and an abundance of wealth. My small keys will open big doors. God will unlock more in me so he can unlock more for me and then unlock more through me. In all things, Jesus, you are the key to my heart. Can we give the Lord a praise this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want you to take this key and put it in a place where you're going to see it on a daily basis. Amen. And understand that God's going to begin to teach us throughout this year what these keys are going to unlock. Amen. I've given you the keys of the kingdom. All right. And I believe that God's going to show us how to use them on a whole new level this year.